we will now uh, follow up with uh, Nguyen Trinh Thi, uh, a, a Documenta 15 artist based in Hanoi. Um, again, we will see a film. Uh, it is kind of a film montage of uh, photographs. Um, which is named Landscape Series Number One. It is about um, landscapes in Vietnam. Uh, I will not speak uh, too much about it because you will now see it. And uh, Trinti will be with us and commenting on the film as well. And then again, like we just um, did it with uh, the presentation by Sao, that we can also. Uh, raise questions to Trinti, who will be then live with us after the presentation of the film. Hello, Trinti. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. I'm, I'm very sorry that there's some problem with the, with the film um, because I resent the, the one with a different format and somehow this one is the, it's just an excerpt. So you get the very beginning of the film and the very end of the film, but not the whole thing. So imagine that the whole thing would be five minutes long and you would go through many more landscapes and it would be a journey uh, and uh, in changing of the landscape and uh, you know going, going from a very wide landscape towards something that is closer and closer and the, at the very end you arrive at something that is very close which is a an injury on the body and at the very end um, the pointing is uh, towards yourself so mm, yeah I, I apologize for this um, but anyway so you get the idea um, and uh, so actually on these uh, photographs uh, were the like a mm, press photographs from Vietnam that I could find online. Um, I made this about almost uh, 10 years ago. Um, coming from, uh, mm, it was around the time when I kind of um, going through this kind of shift in um, attention, um, shifting the, the lens from the foreground to the background into the environment. Um, and I was traveling, I started to travel around Vietnam uh, for other kind of documentary film works and uh, looking, looking at um, 
different landscapes along um, a long way um, throughout Vietnam. And um, I always had um, interest in uh, history and memory. And I became very interested in this idea of um, landscapes as a container to, for, for history and memory. And especially the, the empty landscape actually. Um, because in, in Vietnam, like when you look at the landscapes, um, actually um, the landscape uh, have been written by the state um, for the official kind of uh, history. And um, so I'm, I'm much more interested in the kind of uh, alternative history and the history coming from the people, coming from the bottom up. And, um, you know, and, and to that idea, I think that the, the silent and empty landscapes can speak um, kind of much more um, meaningfully um, of, of this kind of history. So I was interested in using the kind of um, landscape as a silent witness to history. And um, first I, I wanted to, to travel again in Vietnam and make a photography project uh, capturing this kind of landscape. But at the same time, I started to work quite a lot with um, found and archival footage. So I thought that I would start by um, looking online to see what is already available. Um, I wanted to see um, this kind of landscape uh, photographs um, that people put online and um, uh, just to see if, if any of them can kind of stick this kind of idea. And, um, and I realized that there is a tradition um, by uh, Vietnamese journalists who cover local stories. Um, they, they would uh, have this way of arriving uh, in the scene to cover a, a story of something that already happened. Um, usually something bad happened there. And um, they would ask a kind of a local person, uh, either a witness or non-witness, but that, that just need to be a local person um, to, to be in their picture. And they would, you know, they take the picture of this person pointing to something. Uh, and um, basically, if you look at the photo, you don't really understand what, what they are pointing to because that is some story that already happened. So now it's the invisible thing, um, but everything they can say in the caption so, you know, so in the caption, they can say, Mr. So-and-so at this location pointing at something that happened recently. Um, uh, so that was, uh, uh, that's uh, something very interesting for me of, uh, kind of this kind of, um, um, kind of uh, journalism, um, a bit kind of like instrumentalizing, um, you know, kind of the local voice um, and, uh, you know, just, um, yeah, something that really kind of speak to me. Um, and uh, so I wanted to use this kind of images and I, um, I look for this kind of photographs uh, and uh, there would be hundreds and hundreds of them. And there were so many and, um, I, normally I would choose the one that uh, you, you would see a small person um, in the landscape and uh, the person would point at some direction. Maybe uh, a lot of time they would point to something outside of the frame. So actually you, you don't see what they are pointing to. Um, so as a whole, this thing is quite uh, a bit like mysterious and uh, kind of ambiguous. Um, but actually uh, for the local stories of that time and still going on today, a lot of these stories, uh, lo these local stories cover 
uh, many, many uh, stories in Vietnam and uh, a lot of them relate to um, land and land use and um, misuse and mismanagement uh, of, of land. Um, because like in, in Vietnam, like the state, uh, the state own, basically own, own, own the land. And uh, so um, for the people, nobody really own anything. And so like farmers, they have their land to work on, but uh, they can be taken away anytime. And then now it's like increasingly the case that um, uh, with urbanization and industrialization and um, ex uh, extractivist kind of mentality, um, you know, the land is just being used everywhere and uh, with mismanagement and, um, you know, given to um, investors and corporations. Um, yeah, so many, many of these uh, stories would relate to that issue and other kind of um, environmental, ecological stories. Uh, like uh, one of the photos to show the guy was uh, pointing to the land uh, where the government would build the first nuclear power plant. Uh, and actually they would build the, this uh, nuclear power plant on the land of the indigenous people, of the Cham people. And at that same time, um, I was working on that um, project as well. Um, uh, so, so this is kind of like, a, 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 it became kind of like a collective, um, collective story and a collective uh, gesture of pointing. Um, and in a way I feel like I'm, um, I'm trying kind of, uh, the film was, was um, maybe expressing some kind of uh, potentiality of, um, of like giving back uh, this, uh, the agency and the voices to the people um, that it's not, it, it hasn't happened in reality. Uh, this is a kind of a collective story, collective feeling of the time. Um, and, but also of, uh, potentiality for uh, collective action. Um, yeah, so I, th I think maybe I um, can end there with this story. And um, yeah, I just want to mention that um, I made this almost 10 years ago, but it, it was, uh, it, it's still a very important work for me because um, it's uh, kind of like, um, Mm, kind of like started my own interest into the area of um, connecting history and memory to the story of um, environment, uh, indigenous people, and uh, ecology. And I'm still I'm still working on it. And um, uh, and I feel uh, I feel the politics of the of the story, the, 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 the issue of um, um, sustainability uh, in my part of the world um, has been really connected to the, uh, the story of the suppression of voices of the people. Yeah, so, uh, and, 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 and in general, I'm also very interested in uh, in the invisible and the unknown. Um, so uh, sometimes it feels a bit kind of um, ambiguous and um, it is not really kind of like a straight, um, uh, I would say like a straight uh, kind of activism. Um, but I hope that it's, uh, um, it can connect to people in, in, in different way. And uh, um, from my experience showing the work, um, I can see that like the, the local people, uh, the people who are from the same uh, context, 
um, they, they read the story in a different way than the people from outside, but uh, somehow people can connect it to, to it, to this kind of uh, open space. Trinti, yeah. thanks so much for explaining and uh, also giving us and informing us about the stories behind. I would like to say that we would, uh, we have the entire film and we would like to show it now. Um, and uh, the idea now is that we all together watch the entire film and then if the audience uh, would like to also raise some questions directly to you now, we would um, uh, ask uh, you all here now to do this after we have seen the video. Are you okay with this, Trinti? Would you yes, of course. be with us? Thank Super. you. Okay, yeah, then, that's great. Yeah, it very, the, the film very much shows exactly what you just said and the connection between also and the involvement of the human being in the landscape that is now the witness of the history. So please, uh, let's go for the film and then if there are any questions, we will have them afterwards. We have uh, seen it. Okay.
Thank you once again, Mapo. Are there any comments and questions from the audience side that uh, you would like to speak about with Trinti as long as she's with us now? Please don't hesitate to raise your hand and then we run with a microphone to your seat. There is one. Uh, I really enjoy the, all the, the human being that um, inside of the picture, the, in the indication by the finger and the ideas of the distance from the human and the idea he wants to point it at from very far away, sometimes in the very down. So the, the human being, as you just say, the, um, the in involvement of human being within the landscape how human being and then the landscape transfer. So the indication, this movement inside of the picture is very fascinating for me. That's my comment. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I also would like to thank you. And, uh, and thanks again to Trinti. Thanks for joining us um, from remote. Uh, here in Kassel, I would like to invite you for a short coffee break now and uh, or a glass of water or tea, whatever you like. Um, and uh, after this, uh, initially scheduled at 12, I think it is now. What time is it now? Half past 11, I think. So let's meet again at 12. And then we will follow up with uh, our dear partners from the University of Göttingen in, um, with like some more people on stage presenting their projects uh, to us. And um, yeah, from then we will go on with Forum Wissen, but uh, now enjoy a coffee, a tea or a water or whatever you like, and then we come back together at 12. Thank you. <laughs>